Hi there, friends. I'm Scott Wakefield, lead pastor at First Christian Church of Greene County, joined by Sonia Higgs. And we're going to have a coffee convo. convo. Awkward pause. She's going to she's going to hold the awkward pause for a while. <laughs> Coffee Convos is an opportunity to have a good convo with some good friends. And uh, so we're glad to have you with us tonight, Sonia. Thank you. A uh, friendly reminder that tonight is about hearing about the work of God in uh, Sonia's life and uh, getting to know her a little bit. So uh, this is live. Jump in on the comments. Let us know you're here. Help us guide the discussion and uh, give me some good questions uh, for Sonia. So let's start off, Sonia by having you just give us a little bit of personal and family history. Who are you? What makes you you? How'd you get to here tonight at Coffee Convos? <laughs> well, I'm Sonia. I have um, been, I was born and raised in Greene County, so I'm yeah. a Greene County girl. Native. Um, native to this area. Um, how I got to First Christian Church. Sure. I've been, a, um, been in, involved in church, grew up in a Christian home and um, was, had been involved in church basically my whole life mm -hmm. and just um, got to the point where we were ready to step out into a different um, type of church, I guess, Mark and my husband Mark and I. I let me just back up. Let me reel it back. It's your story. Um, reel it away. I was married in 1989 to Mark Higgs. Yeah. And um, so we've been married for 31 years. And... We were looking for a church probably about 2013 and um, found First Christian Church, and we love it. We've plugged in here, and we're really grateful to be able to be here. Yeah. What do, uh, what do you and Mark do? Well, I manage the Christian bookstore here yes. in Greenville. Um, my husband, Mark, is he's retired from the state of Tennessee. He was a highway patrolman mm -hmm. for the state. He's done some different jobs part-time since he retired, um, but currently he's just awaiting that next part-time assignment that I can find for him. <laughs> you all raise cattle. We do raise cattle. That yes. is one thing that um, takes up some of his time is farming, Yeah. and he enjoys that. Yeah. And We've probably farmed for maybe 25 years. Really? Um, started out small, but now we've got a pretty large operation where mm -hmm. we have cow calf a cow calf operation so we um, have mamas that raise babies and then we either sell the babies or we beef the cows or whatever just some you way beef the cow we beef the cow what, yeah. what does <laughs> that it mean means you beef you, the cow you sell their beef you sell their meat so you so, so you end their lives <laughs> yes, we process. That's the word, process. <laughs> we process. Yes. We don't kill, kill them. We process them. Um, that's a good sanitized way to say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, help a uh, help a cow dummy like me understand some more about um, what a cow, calf, heifer, cattle, <laughs> bull, steer. Stud. <laughs> those, those are all the cow terms I know. What are some differences? Because I'm a cow dummy. Okay. And how does the process work and what do you all do? Okay. Because you're have, not doing dairy. No, we are not doing dairy. Okay. We just do the beef operation. And we have Angus cows and they're grass fed. We don't typically do any grain feeding. That's just a process that a finishing operation that you do to change the texture or the taste of the meat a little bit. If you grain feed them, okay. So they're all grass fed. It's just a more of an organic operation. And grain fed means like toward the end. Yes, of their life, it changes the fat content in their um, meat. Okay. So we just keep it lean. We keep it lean. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a bull is what makes a calf. <laughs> I mean, a, a bull and a cow. A heifer is okay. a like up to one year old. Okay. One to 14 months, basically 12 to 14 months. Female. Yes, a female. I effort. know that much. Mm -hmm. That's about yes. all I know. I'm yes. a cow dummy. So the bull can usually sire up to, well, we, we have basically 100 head. So he is a busy guy. 
And um, <laughs> we have got into some new territory for coffee convos. <laughs> okay. And then um, we have calves. So. And, and then we have calves. We have calves from that operation. It takes a ni- it's a nine month gestation period. Really? Yes. Nine and months. so once huh. we have babies, Mama raises the baby. And if she isn't able to raise the baby for whatever reason, then Sonia raises the baby. Really? Yes. How often does that happen? Thankfully, not very often. Okay. Um, some of that has to do with the bull that you choose to use. If uh, we're really getting in a little deeper than maybe you want to go in this. Probably. But, but um, depending on the type or size of your animal, yeah. um, the bull, then you may have larger calves and the mom may have trouble having them and there may be problems there. And so sometimes that huh. causes those types of problems. But Wow. So there's <laughs> bottle feeding that has to happen. If mama doesn't feed it, I'm going to feed it. Yeah. So that's... And you would feed... Say Sonia's raising this baby, mm-hmm. uh, calf. Is yes, that? baby calf. Yes. <laughs> I told you, I'm, I'm cow dumb. Until they have a name, it's baby calf. Okay. Um, if Sonia's raising baby calf, that involves feeding how often? Twice a day, typically. Twice? Mm-hmm. Okay. They get two quarts of milk twice a day. Wow. Mm-hmm. What do you call, and you all don't do this, but what do you call dairy cows? Dairy cows? Dairy cows, yeah. Um, <laughs> There's yeah. no special name. Well, there are Jersey and Holstein are typically what you would call oh, them. Oh, the, the, but those the, are breeds. That's the breed of, okay. yeah. But they're just, to, to my knowledge, because that's not really my niche. Yeah. But. Do people ever raise, what did you, what did you say, Jersey and Holstein? Jersey and Holstein. Holstein? Mm-hmm. Those are just for? Milk. milk? Those are milk production animals. They okay. are built for that. Huh. So um, we'll get off cows in just a second here. Uh, but <laughs> what what are some things that you've learned from farming? Ooh, patience. And not just cows, but... Yes, yeah. patience in general, because that um, when I think about, like, if I have a baby calf, I mm-hmm. had one that um, I had to take off. The mom didn't take her. She would just kick her away. And really? so we took her from the mom uh-huh. and... Um, then she fought me when I would try to feed her. So there was a lot of, it, it takes a, it's a process of getting them to accept the bottle because that's an unnatural process. Oh, sure. So just continuing to work with them. Sometimes it takes four or five days to get them to take a bottle easily. And doing that twice a day, it just takes endurance. It takes patience. Um, and sometimes you, you lose. Um, I remember we did um, a master livestock course, and uh, Milton Orr, who was the local livestock agent here, he said, sometimes the dragon wins. Sometimes we don't get the opportunity to save. You know, we try to save an animal, but it doesn't always happen. It just, and so it just doesn't it accept just the process, come along. It, maybe some other, in something other, some other thing might be wrong with that calf that uh-huh. we don't know or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So you just, I've learned a lot about health livestock health mm. and um, just good procedures of how to farm and to streamline that even. Mm. So um, farming is usually a you have to get up early and do things, especially for dairy cow, I think, right? Um, mm-hmm. But are you an early person or a late person? I'm an early person. You are? Mm-hmm. So is this your is this past your bedtime? No. <laughs> no, I usually like... You remember Dolly, that song or that movie she did? It might, I do the sleeping nine to five. <laughs> sleeping nine to five. What a way Wait to a make a little <laughs> sleep, I guess. Um, so you're more early than late. Are yes. You, so does that mean your breakfast or dinner? Which which is mm. your favorite? I'm dinner. Your dinner. Why why dinner? Steak. Hmm. Okay, there you go. Do you eat your own cows? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the best thing a cow could ever want to be is a meal on your table. Nice. Are you more extrovert or introvert? Extrovert. Yeah. You're energized by being with people mm-hmm. and yeah. Yeah. It's not I always been that. that way though. I was very introverted as a child. Really? Mhm. Uh you're one of six children. Yes. Um What are some things you've learned about where are you in the birth order? I am the middle child. Okay. I am the third. Okay. 
and, and six. And boys, girls, how does that go? Boy, girl. Oh, girl, yes, boy. That's right. Boy, girl. Okay. Girl, boy, boy, boy girl. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. What was it like growing up a cobble in Greene County with five siblings? You had to fight for the food, <laughs> number one. So it's I still I still have trouble like slowing down when I eat because it was just like there's food on the table yeah. and you're no, all going to get it. So I, I, I've heard this a little from larger families. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's not just food; it's other things too. Yes. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I always felt like there was a little bit of a comparison situation in yeah. our family, like. Not so much. I just felt like I was always comparing myself to my older siblings and mm-hmm. having to live up to this standard that mm-hmm. um, it was it was tough to live up to yeah. two older siblings. So it felt like they just did everything right. How much older? Um, my brother is, my oldest brother is, let me think just a second. He is six years older than I am. Okay. And then my sister was five years older than me. Cool. What's the total age Range. The, Do you have any the idea? Range. I think it's probably. Oh my goodness. No. <laughs> Fifteen to. 20, I'm going to say probably twenty. Twenty yeah, years. That's my guess. Wow. My mom can correct me later. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, are you? Um, and we've already got a number of questions that we'll get to. Oh, but I no. want to do a little more. Uh, okay. Sign your personality stuff. Are you more thinker or feeler? Feeler. 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 For sure. Mm-hmm. Really. Yes. That was definitive. I am. Mm-hmm. What makes you and say that? That's something that I've noticed that if I feel good about something or a situation, then I just like go. And then later I think that was a bad decision. <laughs> and so I've learned to just, if I have strong feelings about something, yeah. say, I'm going to think about this a little bit. I'm yeah, going to yeah. pray about it and and just kind of see what the Emerges Lord brings instead of just what my gut is. I, I do not trust my gut in those types of things. <clears throat> Does that mean you've had to learn to be intentional about pros and cons and weighing the situation, the circumstances, and thinking through things in methodical kinds of ways because you had been just going with what feels right or wrong? Yes. In a way that feels unnatural now? Yes. Or that did at least? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I think I'm similar. Um, I think I'm more a feeler than a thinker. People think or feel that I'm typically a thinker because I verbalize certain things certain ways, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm, I'm definitely a feeler. More intuitive, I think, um, than anything. Are you more silly or serious? You know, I think it's probably a good balance of both because yeah. I can really appreciate the silliness and the seriousness. I, I love a good joke. I love to have fun. Yeah, you're um, a laugher. And yes. And, and a smiler and a have funner. Yes. Have funner. Yeah. But but you're not you're not like superficially fun. Um, as if it's all about fun. I'm not sure what that means, superficially fun. Well, but, I understand. Like it's not just laughter for the sake of laughter. There's yeah. or, or whatever, just being goofy. Um, but you care about stuff that matters. Relationship with God, being in the word, um, being a person of integrity. Um, in those kinds of ways, with some seriousness. I think I used to be more cynical, and I realized how that sort of took me down a path that I did not want to go, I think, just with thoughts. And I realized that that wasn't allowing the Lord room to work. It was like I already knew in my mind what was going to happen because I'd seen similar situations. And so now I find myself pulling myself back from that, Mm. like, don't just go there automatically. Mm-hmm. F- realize that God can do anything. He can change any situation. So don't just assume that because it was this way once, it's going to be this way this time. <laughs> I, I'm, I have this phrase I often use that one, for many people, one point equals a straight line, and it's done. They've made decisions about things where they, they assess mm-hmm. things. And one thing, oh, I remember this one time when I did it, therefore. Yeah. Um, it's easy to get there. We all get there in some ways. Uh, but you called that being cynical. Which well, is a good word for it, I think. Sometimes it would go more towards the negative yeah. rather than a positive. And so... No, that's good. It just it seemed like it, it was weightier in, on my heart. Mm. So I just asked the Lord to help me not be so 
cynical about things to see that he would be able to change any situation or, you know, he can do anything. So, yeah. Um, what kinds of things would you say you had been or struggle with being cynical about? Um, people in relationship things? Yes. Okay. Like what? Um, if there were a situation that had happened, maybe um, if I'd spoken to somebody about something and they had responded in a certain way, yeah, then I might be fearful to mm. confront them with the situation again for the uh, fear of the negative reaction or mm -hmm. how am I going to, am I going to take this personally or whatever. And so sometimes that might hold me back from being willing to step into an uncomfortable position. Yeah, yeah. And that's good. So it's been a process of learning that um, it's not just what my thoughts are about something, but that the Lord can change things and not to let that hold me back from doing what I know is the right thing to do. Yeah, I have a similar thought. There, there's a parallel train of thought that I've been on for the last number of years, realizing, and it's similar, it's not quite the same though, but realizing. Um, more and more the limits of what I know and understand and see accurately. Um, I, I think that part of that's just maturity and seeing mm -hmm. things differently. Um, but the limits of what we can know well um, about what others say, what they mean, the situation that's going on. Um, yeah, that's, that's good. Um, so questions have come in by the throngs of, wow, oh, well, I was going to say, by the throngs of Almost a dozen-ish. Uh, what is your best memory Ooh, since my being best memory. since being at FCC? Since being at FCC. Since being at First Christian Church, what's your best memory? Um. You can say my preaching that one time <laughs> when this thing you said that one. I think really serving is one of the ways that um, I'm trying to think of a specific thing, but. I love being with my regen group, mm. uh, my girls, mm -hmm. and um, even though sometimes that's hard, there yeah. are hard things that happen, sure. that the joy of seeing the Lord work in their heart and open their eyes to spiritual truth, it just energizes me, and yep. that is the thing that feeds my soul. Lovely. It's a good heart. Mm -hmm. It is hard, but it's a good heart. Um, okay, and if so somebody she, else can think of something that they remember me looking really happy at, they can feel free to share that. Yeah, feel free to <laughs> feel free to, to to do that. She didn't take the bait about the sermon. So, um, who is your favorite Christian author? Oh, the Apostle Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's go non-Bible. John Piper. John Piper. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Any particular book, the, or what about him? Future Grace was the book that changed my, and I'm I'm going to try not to cry because this yeah. that book just changed my whole perspective of who I am in Christ. Yeah, that is a good one. It was very foundationally solid, and it was at the time in my life that I needed truth. Yeah, and it just it was like a pouring of a well mm. out of, from a well onto my soul. Good and stuff. So I've always just, and it's kind of funny because the first time I listened to one of his sermons, I heard his voice and I was like, I cannot hey, listen to this man's yeah. voice. But now I'm just like, give me some Piper. I love to hear his voice. I'm when I hear him on uh, APJ, uh, Ask Pastor John is, uh, mm -hmm. uh, for those of y'all out there watching, um, is a, a video podcast where he answers questions that come in. Um, and I'll hear him talk. And I have that kind of a feeling mm -hmm. about it, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Desiring God and Future Grace are two centrally important books of his. There are a few others that are good ones, but the, yeah, Future Grace is a great mm -hmm. one. Um, what have you missed most since COVID started? What have you missed most since COVID started? Hugs. Or maybe who? <laughs> who? Hugs. Hugs. Uh, uh, you know, really... Probably um, gathering with my family, mm. we have sort of slowed that a bit. I'll, you know, individually we may go visit my parents or each other, but, but we used together. to have like big, let's all get together and yeah. just have a big meal or whatever, and we're not doing that now. Mm. So, yep. 
that's been a hard thing. Sure. Absolutely. This next person says, Sonia, you are amazing and full of wisdom. Is there a particular study you do on the daily? Yes. What is that? There is. It's actually called The Bible. (laughs) That's a good one. That's a good place to start. (laughs) Um, The thing that I do every day is I read scripture. And um, my sister has a podcast that is The Bible Recap. And so I listen to The Bible Recap every day. Yeah. I know and a I'm, number of people who do Bible recap every day. Yeah. So that chronological reading of Scripture has been really helpful to me yeah. just to get the, you know, the meta-narrative of Scripture rather than just these little stories sprinkled yeah. throughout. I've really enjoyed reading chronologically. Anything you're reading lately or that you've been noticing lately in your reading? <laughs> I'm in Romans right now. Okay. And I'm love, Romans is like my favorite book in scripture and um, a really cool thing was I was sharing that with my region group the other night and afterwards one of the girls came to me and she said I need I need some answers and I need some answers about um, Romans 9 (laughs) (laughs) and so it was really cool we got to have a great talk yeah and I was able to share some things with her and you know the Lord just brought me through a lot of that at a difficult time in life and um, I was just, I couldn't get enough of teaching and learning and the hunger yeah. is still there even yet today. And I'm yeah. just thankful that the Lord is, you know, gracious to show me the things that he's shown me and to help me see truth. Yeah, that's right. Um, what mode of transportation is preferred, car or big bike? And I think you mm. know what big bike means. I know what big bike means. Um, <laughs> this it is depends someone who knows on the you. day. It depends on the day. Because two days ago when I was driving to work, I thought I would really love to ride my motorcycle today. But it's way too cold for that. It was cold. Way too cold. Um, some of you may not know that uh, we have a biker here. You all go pretty often in the yeah. when the weather's nice. We do. Yeah. Um, you have some riding buddies. Mm-hmm. I've seen your Facebook <laughs> pictures here and there. I thought, hey, that's so cool. We love it. It yeah. is. It's a lot of fun. It's a great opportunity to connect with people. Yeah. We meet a lot of people. I bet. Um, some of our riding buddies. There's one friend that we ride with that we've ridden consistently with for a couple of years now. We just like met him at the marathon one day. He was just hanging out by his bike, and he said, hey, where are y'all going? <laughs> hey, we're going to Knoxville. And he said, you care if I tag along? Cool. Sure, come on. Really? So, like, we've been buds ever since. Cool. It's just been a neat – It's a people will speak to you when you're riding a motorcycle that will n- – any other time, they will never even turn their head to look at you. The only time I've had somebody walk up when I've been uh, putting gas in my Honda – odyssey minivan is uh <laughs> to say something weird to me not to you got five bucks yeah yeah <laughs> right yeah <laughs> it's not where you going <laughs> look can i tag along that is not how it happens um what's your favorite meal other than steak Ooh, salmon salmon yeah any particular way grilled okay Blackened and grilled. Okay. Not like barbecue and da-da, blackened and grilled. Just blackened and grilled salmon, yeah. Cool. I love a good salad, too, but my tastes have changed over the last, say, six to eight months, and that's a good thing. Really? Yes. How so? Six to eight months? I have really been trying very hard to be consistent in my eating patterns, where before I was just kind of like, Oh, fill it up, whatever. Yeah. You know, and so now Being it's, intentional about it. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's good. Um, how's that made a difference in how you feel energy? Much more energy. I'm very thankful that the Lord has helped me with it because I've tried this numerous times to just gain control, and it was like I could never gain control of my eating. Yeah. Um, and it had more to do with my emotions yes. than it did with my hunger. Sure. So um, Regen helped me in that way, and Allison, and just some people that I'd talk to about my patterns and the things that I would go to. So yeah. it's been good to sort of see how I was choosing to give in to food whenever I shouldn't have been giving in to food. I should mm-hmm. have been leaning on the Lord and asking for help in those areas. 
Um, mm. But after that, you know, it's maybe been about eight months now, but the Lord has really helped me and it's, it has made a big difference in my energy level. Cool. What is your, uh, oh, well, do you have a favorite quote? Hmm. The quote that I think about a lot um, is a C.S. Lewis quote that um, is, I can't remember exactly how it begins now, but it's that um, The unblessed God promises shouts. of, oh, okay, God it's shouts pain. in our, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, God, God whispers in our pleasure. Yes. He speaks in our conscience. And he screams yes. or shouts, shouts in our pain. Mm -hmm. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. And that, it just reminds me that um, when things are going good, that can also be a way that I can be complacent. Mm. And then I need to realize that God gives good things, but those good things are not meant for me to just be on autopilot. He's allowing those things, but I need to be serious about um, realizing that they can become um, obstacles in my growth. So pain, when it happens or when difficulties, when difficult circumstances happen, then I can see those as an opportunity for God to say, I'm, hey. Look at this. Yeah. Notice can you see this. what I'm doing in this? Um, do you see that I'm there in it? Yeah. Uh, what in your life have been examples of um, some of the whispering or shouting things for you that you've um, that have been growth points for you the shouting um was there's been a couple of things but one of those that really stands in the forefront of my mind was um, when my sister got brain cancer my older sister gina she uh, passed away in 2016 mm -hmm. and at that point it was the um, inability to do anything at all we were powerless right, yes. to help her. Yes. Um, and realizing that you have absolutely no control over your life or how to help someone in um, a fatal disease. Someone you love. Um, someone, someone that you're you love. Motivated to yes. help and want to try to. Yes. And yeah. so um, just the searching, uh, not only the resources that we have available to us, but also realizing that. <clears throat> God is ultimately in control of that, and He will do as He will. Yeah. And so being willing to submit to whatever His will was yeah. and the pain that I felt in that, yeah. that was really one of the things that bolstered my faith. And I felt like it was that point in my life that I could have gone either way. Mm. So um, I do remember... Specifically, one night when we first found out that my sister had cancer, um, just we c I could hardly sleep. It was sort of that um, I would sleep a couple hours, get up a couple hours, whatever. And um, so one night I just went out on the deck and was just looking up at the sky and asking God, you know, I know you're there, but what are you doing? Yeah. What's happening here? And um, he just, it was just like I could feel a special peace. You know, I've got this. You, yeah. You don't have to worry. And so it was um, just that moment that I kind of let, I just said, okay, whatever you want to do, just be glorified in us. Yeah. Um, this is a bit of a word, a weird word choice here, but I think it is accurate. Um, was that a moment of resignation to um, his power, control, and sovereignty in that moment? that you had to get to in order to best to deal with and help her and best deal with it for yourself? She already was there. I, I know that. You um, have talked about that before, yeah. <laughs> she was there. Yes. Um, it did take me a little more because it felt like I'm, I'm a – I'm a fixer. I'm a, I'm sure. a helper, a supporter. I try oh, yeah. to do whatever I can to help anybody. Yeah. And so realizing that, yes, exactly. <laughs> right. My powerlessness in that, um, yeah. it was f at first just like, okay, God. Yeah. I, I know. But then. But was your resignation at that moment, um, did that help you help her better? 
as well as help you in your dealing with it. Yes. Mm -hmm. How so? I think that we were able to communicate on that level of God is actually doing something more gotcha. than we see here. Yes. It was, you know, this is our if little... If she was already there... Yes. ...and you hadn't yet gotten there, mm -hmm. then that helped. And part of our discussions while she was still able to talk, that was uh, some of the things that we talked about was what cool. God could do with it and what He was doing. And hmm. um, the things that... The comments that people have um, told me from since she passed mm -hmm. about just how their hearts were changed because of her willingness to say, even though this is happening to me, God is good. Never yes. take your eyes off him. Right. Jesus is king. Yeah, that's right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, what about what about you in your life? What have been some difficult challenges for you you've had to overcome? Um, you mentioned your sister. Um, and and Marriage was a difficult challenge for me. Okay. I mean, you know, don't we all go in that thinking it's all about me? Maybe I'm the only one that did that, but no, yeah, um, you're right. that's <laughs> it. You're the only one. We have we have finally gotten to the first time. That's great. So, no, um, like the first seven years of our marriage. If was you had learned challenging. this in marriage, something's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very Absolutely. challenging, and it just got to the point where it was like, God, you've got to do something here. I don't think we're going to make it. Marriage is hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a sense in which if it's going to sound a little worse than I intended to, <laughs> there's a sense in which if you don't get to that place where there's enough going on between the two of you, where you both don't get to this sense of desperate need for God's intervention, then you're not doing living together mm -hmm. rightly, um, which is part of that sanctifying over time process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So um, how have you grown because of that? How are you stronger because of that? We have both grown so much just because of that difficulty that we came through and realizing we do want to stay together. We do want to work things out. We do want to bring glory to God in our relationship, yeah. even though it's hard sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I'm just grateful that the Lord has uh, allowed Mark and I to continue to stay together. Yeah. And um, even he puts up with me. I know that I'm sometimes probably a big challenge <laughs> to put up with, but um, let's, let's I, dive into that next. In that. Keep going. <laughs> 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 we'll give you an opportunity to tell us maybe what you he'll, mean by Maybe that. he'll chime in with a <laughs> remark or something. <laughs> uh, um, a couple more questions have come in. What was your favorite toy as a child? Favorite toy as a child? Well, My, I was a Barbie junkie. Were you? I loved Barbie. But now a single toy. We used to have this evil Knievel wind-up motorcycle thing. I know all. Like, I know exactly oh, what you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. We need to take off. Oh, yeah. Coolest loved thing it. ever. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember playing with that at a babysitter's house. Actually, it was an apartment. Because um, I didn't have it, but apparently somebody there did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we are still in COVID crazy. Um, what are you seeing and learning because of COVID? Um, learning a lot more things about health than I ever cared to know as far <laughs> as... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Epidemiology uh, and uh, way more than my brain can process a lot of times. <laughs> um, but I am learning that that God is still doing things, even though it feels like some things stopped. Yeah, His Spirit is still there working, yeah. and that people need to still connect with each other, even though yeah. um, it feels like we're not supposed to. That that's really one of the things that we must have is that continued um, connection and um, not just over the telephone or but I, face to face to me is just I. I think there's no substitute for that. Yeah. Um, you just talked about um, the need for human connection, face to face in person. Um, that that has never gone away, <laughs> but it, it, it's like it's it's uh, 
it's something for which people are more desperate and, and needy and, and, and aware of that. And it's not new, but but it's pressed on that. Um, it's magnified, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's exacerbated that and magnified mm-hmm. that. Um, when when uh, at the store, you see lots of people from mm-hmm. all over Greene County. Um, what are the kinds of things you're seeing and hearing from them as they talk about their experience of COVID? Um, some people are very fearful, and sure. rightly so. Sure. Um, but the majority of people that I talk to have, I think, finally gotten to the point where they just, you know, want to use good judgment. Sure. Good, make good choices, mm-hmm. but um, realize that there are bigger things that are happening beyond what we see yeah. in COVID. Yeah. Um, one thing that I want to go back to that I uh, started to get to a little bit earlier in our conversation, um, that's a thing for me, it's a theme I want to come back to in lots of people, in lots of people's lives. Uh, you're a part of leadership here at First Christian. Um, you're involved in a bunch of important ways. Um, you've been in church. You've you've you run a business. Um, you have a farm on the side. Um, <clears throat> what makes for good leadership? Integrity. Okay. Integrity, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that my mom said to me once was that um, you can never push people. You lead by being in front. You don't stand behind them and push them to do something. You mm-hmm. have to be walking that way yourself yeah. in order for them to want to follow. Okay. Um, so I think just being willing to do the things that you're asking others to do, that's something I've always had impressed upon me is don't ask somebody to do it if you're not willing to do it yourself. Um, it's kind of like a, this is leading a by thing. example. Uh, probably so. Yeah. 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 Um, and just be diligent. Diligence, I think inspires, I think it inspires other people to, what do you mean by diligence? Um, just if you have knowing what your goal is okay, yeah. and, um, communicating that with the people that you're leading mm-hmm. and then just hopefully inspiring them to want to help, um, meet that goal, yeah. whatever that may be. You mentioned integrity, um, communicating well and, and slash clearly, um, inspiring people that are following. Um, what are some examples of that kind of leadership in your life that you've experienced through your years and, uh, people that have embodied that or you've learned that from? My parents, um, first and foremost, I mean, okay. that's definitely one of the key people who have shaped who I am. Sure. Um, and when I think about more recently, Allison mm-hmm. as a leader, mm-hmm. um, definitely. Um, what was it about your parents or Allison that is um, that integrity, communication, um, inspiration? Inspiring. Um, give me some examples of those. Um, or what comes to it's mind? It's just like you know, them. when whenever you see those people, specifically my parents, whenever they would have a challenge that they would see, and just watching how they handled it, mm. and um, seeing them handle things, and uh, that's the character that's shaped. Yeah. Because of watching and knowing that those things matter, you know, the the choices that you make matter. Um, and there are a few people who want to be you when when they grow up by the way (laughs) (laughs) so um you you talked about uh how they responded as leaders with integrity communicating well inspiring all those kinds of things you said uh, with diligence um in circumstances that tested those things Mm -hmm. um and the people you've mentioned your parents and allison are people with whom you've had relationship and been in a community with over an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. Um, You can't see how they respond unless you've been with somebody enough. Mm -hmm. Um, 
which speaks to the diligence piece. Um, what are some ways that you find uh, for you leading people who are following you that you do those things or try to do those things? Whether it's intentional or just sort of happens organically in relationship and community with them. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some ways you try to do that? I try to just find out what's happening in their life. Hey, is there something um, you're very, that you're, I can... You're pointed about that. I'm not like that at all. I don't think that way. About, it's just sort of like, you but, know, what's going on with you? I need, yeah. let me, help me know you. But, but, but you will, you will scheme by thinking about that intentionally with other people and finding ways to put a card in there or to, to mm -hmm. say a thing or to, to show up with a something for somebody in ways that, uh, what I meant by pointed is that, that show that you've thought about that with each person in very intentional kinds mm -hmm. of ways. Yeah. It matters. Absolutely. I mean, that's just what I've been taught. It matters. It's mattered in my life in the past. What matters? Just to know that somebody cares enough to ask. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. I care about you. Yeah. And so when, when you know that someone cares, then you want to care about them. And it's just that reciprocating relationship that happens. Yeah. Um, or that's what I found it to be anyway. Yeah. What's the ratio? This is going to be a little bit more of a vulnerable. I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a cow dummy. There we go. Um, what's the ratio of number of times? Um, and you're not going to want to answer this. Uh, you're not going to want to answer this. You're, you're not going to want to answer this. Let me just say that. Um, what's the ratio of number of times where you do that for others? to how many times others do it for or with you in those mm -hmm. kinds of ways that you are intentional about with others. And, and, and some mm -hmm. of it for you is organic because that's who you are. But you're not, you're not willy-nilly. You're very clearly, um, and I think when you were talking about this uh, silly, serious thing, mm -hmm. um, you're definitely both of those in a balanced way. But I can see that you're, you're doing that with people in ways that are encouraging, helpful, and fun to be around. Um, but at the same time, you're trying to you're trying to peer into that person's soul. <laughs> yes. Yes, there's there's reason, no, there's that's intention you. behind yeah, it. That's yeah. That's definitely you. Mm -hmm. So, um, when you're doing those kinds of things in those ways as you're leading people, thinking about them, asking how they're doing, sending a card, whatever it mm -hmm. is, what percentage of the time are you doing that for others? What what's that number? And what's the ratio of that to number of times that people are doing that in a Sonya way for you? Maybe 20% I get the so, feedback I mean the, the if I were giving 80 to 80 20 is that what is that the number you're asking for is that, sure. is that how you say a ratio <laughs> that works <laughs> for ratio <laughs> that works um, so for every four times that you're going at somebody else you're getting one yeah probably so are you being accurate or are you under are you being nice to I think I think that's probably accurate. I mean, I, f I feel like... I, I, I said in a Sonya way. <laughs> in, in a yeah, Sonya way. Yeah. Not in a, not in a. oh, it just happens naturally and organically, and, and Joe Schmo asks you or Jill Schmo asks you, how you doing? Oh, okay, cool. All right. Um, see ya. That, that doesn't count. It, it is a, how are you doing? I'd really like to know. And I sit and listen mm -hmm. while you talk. And then I ask a question based off what you said that takes it further and shows I actually care about you and that may keep mm -hmm. going and piercing into your soul, that kind of thing. Um, so don't count that other stuff. I meant in a Sonya kind of way. What, what's the number of times that you're doing that for others and the number of times that it's done for you? Because I want to make a point. <laughs> so you said four to one. Okay. But in a Sonya way. How many people are feeding into you in the leadership way that you're feeding into others like that? That's the question. Okay. That's the heart so of the like, question. Yeah, maybe maybe I might say that it would be ninety ten. Okay. I mean, let's. So. If that's a ratio number. 
Ninety no, ten. I, I, don't know. I don't think ninety ten is a number. <laughs> That's a percentage. <laughs> it doesn't even count nine. as a number. Um, nine to one. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah, a yeah. ratio. Yeah. yeah, that is a ratio. A ratio. Yes. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I think you're getting that more accurate number there. Almost twice. Well, more than twice what you said earlier. Um, that's what I find happens. Th the more you're leading. Mm -hmm. Um, ironically, it, it's it's not it's not like people think. Uh, the more you're leading, the more you're responsible for, um, the less people are coming at you in those kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. um, what does that? Uh, what does that affect? Because uh, I've said about you for years. Um, what will be in a, a meeting or something somewhere? Somebody will will say something about, well, uh, what's that one person's name? And we all say, Sonia knows, because you know everybody. You know everybody around here um, and have been around for a long time at the bookstore, et cetera. Um, what does your nine to one ratio mean that you have the opportunity to do for the sake of the kingdom on the daily for you? What does that what, what kind of platform does that mean you get to have in the lives of people around you? I do hope that it helps people know that I care about them. Sure. That um, who they are matters, that they're, what, what they're going through matters, um, and I want to be able to help point them to truth. Mm. Um, for me, that's really the bottom line is just, can I help put some truth into what is going on in their life? Just plant a seed of truth. Yeah. And um, and the relational cred from doing the yes. nine times. Mm -hmm. Because the world- Is the platform for that for It's you. that the world is hurting. Yeah. There's so much pain and yeah. um, things that it's easy to, allow them to overcome our spirit or you know any not be able to see any hope in it and I just want to be able to say there is hope yeah absolutely good stuff so what's God currently teaching you Sonia Higgs <sighs> he is teaching me to trust him in the places where I'm uncomfortable. And it seems like that changes, like he's just brought me through some different things, but now it's more of the, are you willing to speak whenever I ask you, whenever mm. I put this, give you this opportunity, are you are you willing to open your mouth? And or that's the you, uncomfortable thing. Yes, yeah. it's that the place where I could easily say, I'm, I don't feel comfortable doing that, or um, I don't feel like that's my place, mm. but, um, but you're there. I'm, yeah. <laughs> and I, I've place, been given the opportunity, there. so I know that the Lord is allowing it. So it's just a trusting in His sovereignty, provision, and timing mm -hmm. to know that He is, He's got a reason for it. Hmm. And so I'm, I'm just learning to um, walk through the doors He opens. Let's end with this. Um, what are you excited or encouraged about? Um, Doesn't have to be one. I'm, it can be I, many, whatever. The thing that just really brings me joy is to see what God is doing in other people's lives. And, and in my own life, I'm, I'm always... Um, thrilled, <laughs> even if it's like five o'clock in the morning and I'm reading and I see mm -hmm. something different about mm -hmm. him or whatever. And it's just like this, I get it. Thank you, Lord, for letting me see this about you. Yes. Um, and so that's, it, it's, you know, it's just exciting to me to like know that his, of awe about his, spirit his character is, and nature. Yes. And, yeah. That he is still working even, um, even though things have felt like they've come to a standstill sometimes, yeah. that he's still there, he's still working. Yeah. But the thing that I'm excited about, um, 
just I'm excited to continue to be working here at um, leadership with FCC. Um, next steps to see what that is going to be producing. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's an, a different opportunity. It's more my yes. niche of connecting with people, yeah. and so I'm I'm grateful for that, and I'm just looking forward to what God's going to do in that and see the people that he's going to bring to us. And I'm glad to hear you say that. I, um, for those of you who don't know, Next Steps is how we connect people to, and it's not just for new people, it's how we connect people to the habits and our vision um, and help them discover God's vision for their lives. It's all just a way of talking about practical ways to grow spiritually and to become a deeper and wider disciple and disciple maker but it's different than it used to be and we're changing some things and it's all morphing into something different and new but i think better more effective um and and i and about about a weekish ago i was thinking about some things writing a few things um and i got this sense okay god's going to continue to use next steps in some really cool ways that will become way beyond what people understand it to be. It's not just connecting folks to our programs. It's going to be a disciple-making replication process in some ways that uh, that mean that those who are Next Steps mentors are going to be mentoring people, like without even people realizing it, they're going to become people who help other people find and follow Jesus. Um, it's going to continue to be... Uh, a building of disciples um, strategy in a, mm-hmm. a bunch of cool ways that can scale way beyond just the Monday night room. Um, it can happen anywhere and everywhere um, in some real cool ways, I think. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it's going to be really helpful for people eventually. <laughs> I do think that it for me, um, having been in care for a number of years, a couple yeah. of years, and yeah. um, being able to connect with people in that way. And then COVID stopped all that. Yes. And so it's just exciting to me to be able to do that connection again yeah. in a, an intentional way. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Lovely. Good stuff. Thank you. We're so glad you're a part of us. Thank you. Thank I'm you for glad. being here and being a part of Coffee Convo. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. And uh, being with us tonight, jumping in the comments and giving us some good questions. See ya. <laughs>